Hello there YouTube, uh, this is Joel from Jonesy's and I wanted to uh, give you guys a more in-depth and more detailed look at the uh, Diesel Suburban project. We've got the uh, Sabruno, um, gotten a lot of emails, gotten a lot of phone calls, a lot of guys uh, requesting some more information on uh, some of the intricacies of this conversion so they can either try and attempt it themselves or uh, maybe have me build one for them. So I thought I'd go into some of the some of the ins and outs of what is custom and what is not um, on this build. Um, obviously the the foundation is a 1997 three quarter ton Suburban. It has a six inch lift. Uh, we kept the independent front suspension. To do a diesel conversion the uh, lift is not necessarily required but boy it sure does make things a little bit easier so uh, you always want to start a 6BT conversion um, with a three-quarter ton vehicle that way you uh, know that there's not going to be any issues with the weight of the engine um, I get a lot of a lot of questions about oh, can have you souped up the front suspension and no other than we Rebuilt a lot of it, um, put all new bushings, uh, control arm bushings, ball joints, wheel bearings, um, all that stuff is all brand new. Um, this uh, vehicle had a 454 engine in it and the weight of the Cummins is not significantly more than the 454. So um, the torsion bar and the heavy duty three quarter ton suspension can handle it. Okay, so back to, back to what some of the intimacies of this conversion. So what did we use out of our donor vehicle? Well we had a 1994 Dodge truck two-wheel drive as our donor vehicle and it gave up obviously the Cummins, the uh, radiator, the intercooler, the fan, the fan clutch, the upper fan shroud portion of it as well as some other minor things, the transmission uh, cooler, which I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video. Intercooler and all of the intercooler piping does fit um, in a stock grill. This happens to be a work truck grill. Okay, so it is not the not your standard uh, suburban SLE or SLT or whatever package uh, GMC grill. It has a little different marker light configuration. Um, we uh, I wanted to go with this style grill because it allows uh, for the intercooler piping to fit. Um, and I also think that this style of grill kind of fits with the uh, the matte finish theme that we are going for with this rig. So if you're considering doing this and you don't have a work truck grill, you are going to have to modify your existing marker lights. I kept the uh, air conditioning condenser from the Suburban um, as well as I relocated the transmission cooler. So. It uh, doesn't have a transmission controller up front, but I'll show you guys exactly what I did for transmission controller or transmission cooler, I should say, a little bit later on in the video. Uh, hoses are stock Dodge hoses. You can see I had to add a little bit of an extension to get the spacing to work out correctly just because of the positioning of the radiator um, in relation to the engine. Um, there is no body lift on this. Um, some of the other conversions out there, um, when they run a little different accessory setup, they uh, require a body lift. I didn't want to do a body lift, and so I opted to try to keep everything as low as possible, which comes to the air conditioning. So we went with the mid-mount style air conditioning. A um, couple of custom brackets and stuff that we made for that, like this upper upper alternator support is one that we fabricate as well as the lower water neck it's a straight out horizontal water neck um, the stock dodge stuff does not work in this application we were able to retain all of the stock location for the valve hopefully it will focus in there and uh, retained all of that in its current location um, okay, this brings up another one. Hopefully you guys can see that. That right there is a small electric vacuum pump. The heater control 
heater valve uh, that controls the water going in and out of the rear heat and in the uh, heater core is controlled by a little vacuum solenoid. Well, all of you guys know that these diesels uh, produce boost, they don't produce any vacuum, and I didn't see any reason to retain the vacuum booster pump that originally came on the Dodge, so it's kind of tucked way down in there. I'll move some of these wires out of the way. Anyway, ran the direct power steering pump uh, for the Hydro Boost um, and deleted the vacuum pump. So again, all of the stock uh, Suburban Hydro Boost plumbing um, all hooked right back up and we actually used the factory original equipment um, Chevrolet GMC power steering pump for that. So all of the brake system is completely uh, untouched for this conversion so your ABS is all the same as well as the cruise control. Cruise control uh, comes around, hooks up to the throttle. Um, the existing Suburban throttle pedal was retained and the cable itself was modified. Over here you can see where the original um, engine computer used to sit. I uh, created a little uh, distribution center where I have all the relays for all the LED light bars, the Dodge fuel solenoid relay, as well as a little uh, small little fuse block for the added accessories. Um, air intake is a simple 90 degree boot into a big, big honkin air filter. Um, which did actually require a little bit of massaging on the uh, fender uh, well uh, so that it doesn't interfere excessively with the bottom of the hood. We retained the 4L80E transmission um, and we utilized a US shift controller and we mounted that controller. Hopefully you guys can see up under here we mounted that controller and then wired it directly utilizing the factory harness so we took apart the factory wiring harness uh, that came off the transmission um, pinned it out traced it out uh, re-terminated it and then routed the wires in here and uh, mounted it right <coughs> installed it on the uh, US shift controller it's just a very basic controller you don't need anything fancy and then right above it you guys can see is our uh, TAC interface. We uh, pulled the uh, tachometer wire directly off of the alternator and it um, When you do a diesel conversion, you definitely want to add in some gauges So again, we went with some pillar pod gauges that have the matching font As our stock instrument cluster We also then cut in and added a couple of uh, LED light bar and fog light switches in the dash as well. There's the four-wheel drive. It's got push-button four-wheel drive that still um, all that wiring harness was untouched and just is maintained. Okay, interior-wise we uh, went full custom premium leather on all the seats and then we two-toned the inserts and added some perforation. This being a 1997 Suburban um, a lot of it needs to be needed to be kind of freshened up, um, which included the seat belts. So we had the seat belts, um, at least the front seat belts, re uh, rewebbed and put in so that they have a, a new feel to them. Painted the center console as well as kind of freshened up the paint on the dash and the door panels. Did a custom uh, insert here to match the the seats. And that pretty much kind of covers the interior. Oh, we took out one last thing. We took out the whole entire headliner, uh, replaced all the headliner, and then also same with the carpet. And the carpet, uh, we had one person that commented on uh, how it was so quiet in here when I was driving around. Well, the carpet is uh, from Auto Custom Carpet and it has a heavy mass backing on it. Um, and we also added in some sound deadener from Fat Mat. 
So we've covered the uh, engine compartment, we've covered the interior, let's go down to the brakes and then we'll move on to the drivetrain. So again, the factory equipment hydro boost brake system is all completely stock 1997 GMC Suburban. But we did, however, upgrade our brakes. Uh, went with some drilled and slotted rotors from Rotor Depot and installed all new ceramic brakes as well as some new calipers. Again, we went with 37-1250 Cooper Discoverer SDT Pros as well as some XD Series 20 inch rims. This uh, is called the Sabruno, so we uh, took a Suburban logo and a Tahoe logo and put that on. And also went with some aftermarket towing mirrors that are telescoping. Matte finish um, is kind of a custom color. Hopefully you guys can, can see. It does have a little bit of a metallic to it. Um, and it's kind of a, a gunmetal bluish gray color. And then we wanted to contrast it a little bit because I just thought that that'd be a little too much, too much of the same color. Um, and so we contrasted the, all the fender flares and the lower part of the doors and rockers. Rear differential is a 373 gear ratio. Full float, 14 bolt. Uh, fuel tank is exactly the stock fuel tank. Uh, modified the filler neck and then added the diesel only uh, cap. I think you guys saw in my other video, I went with Move for all the bumpers and then I fabricated the custom uh, tire swing out as well as the ladder rack. Well, I won't really go into too many, too much more about that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Electric fuel pump uh, was removed from the tank um, and then just a little extension pickup tube uh, was added and it was put back together. It's a 42 gallon stock fuel tank. So, like I said, the lift uh, makes this conversion a little bit easier. There's a little bit more room up front um, for different components. Um, but it is not absolutely required. Okay, coming underneath the vehicle, you can see that right there. Some of you guys will recognize that that is the stock Dodge uh, water over hydraulic transmission cooler. And I mounted it along the frame rail over here and then plumbed it into the rear heat system. So if you are monitoring your transmission temperature and it starts to climb, you can turn on the uh, rear heat fan and it will immediately lower your transmission temperature. So I had some thoughts of wiring that in automatically through a thermostat switch so that it would just kick on that rear heat. Um, but I decided that we would just monitor and see if it was really, really required. Um, in addition to that cooler, you can't really see it, well, maybe you can. We mounted a vertical cooler over there off of that rear cross member. So again, lift these drop brackets, brackets for this torsion bar cross member, um, give you a little bit more clearance around your transfer case. So exhaust. Um, started out with a kit from Diamond Eye. It's a four inch kit. Mounted it in here, ordered it specifically for the 97 Suburban and then we modified the front section to accommodate. Underneath of the vehicle uh, we cleaned up with pressure washer, steam cleaner, lots of degreaser and then we used a chassis saver product to coat everything. We also inspected all of the suspension components and made sure that all of that stuff was in suitable condition. So this truck is definitely going to get used 
but we wanted to take a 20 year old vehicle and make sure that it was good for another 20 years. The transmission and the engine itself um, had to be moved approximately three inches farther back so there you can see the existing holes for the transmission cross member and the new location for the tranny cross member. So hopefully this video sheds some light on some of the intricacies of these builds. Um, made sure everybody could see exactly what it was. Oh, I for totally forgot about the, the roof rack. Okay, so roof rack, pretty simple. Uh, went with Smitty built for the roof rack and then put on two 52 inch curved LED light bars on the top and they work amazing. So, Defender Series roof rack fits with this theme really well. And then there's our custom fabricated ladder to get up to the roof rack. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and that uh, will answer a lot of your questions about this build. Be happy to answer any other questions. You can send me an email at info at jonesies.com or post your comments to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That actually does help support uh, these projects and some of the documentation for these projects. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.